Hello and good morning. Welcome to New Forest Morse. Today is the day after the pairings. We're going to see how many of our animals are blocked. And Jared, you had a little sneak preview yesterday. You came in to see what was going on. Yep. Did you see any locks at all? Yeah, there was three locks last night. And which ones did you see? Um, we had a cinnamon pied, a cinnamon hip pied. Let's have a look and see if they're still locked. They were locked. So this is the... Um, yeah, they're still locked. Oh, look how dirty they've got in there. That was so clean yeah. before they went in together. But that's a lovely sign, isn't it? Look how wonderful they are together. So that's really good news. So hopefully there's some panda pies there in the making. So we'll leave them locked. So they've only been together for 24 hours. So we'll let that lock be a sustained lock jab. And then the panda girl, did they she lock? Locked. No lock? Let's have a little look and see. So the panda to the banana. Cool, it's interesting behavior. Look, the female's on top of the male. <laughs> Poor guy, she's so big and heavy. It's amazing how they can sustain such weight. Can you see how she's lifted her body up? She's using him as a prop. Yeah. And I wonder what's going on there, Jared. Do you think it's all part and parcel of the passage of eggs moving down? Or what yeah. do you, or do you think, think it's literally just how they're laying? Yeah. I think she, he's gone under there, she's just gone on top. But it's interesting, the, the, the lump, the, the, the drop off is right where the egg starts to move down. That's what I find interesting. So that, that might seem, you know, why wasn't that? down here or why it wasn't there it's right on the point where the eggs start to move down so I think there's more going on here personally mm. but it might be that I'm o I might yeah. be over reading it but uh, Jared and I often it's quite healthy because we both get different views on things and I get I see it one way Jared sees it another way and I'm thinking it's actually I'm, very I'm healthy. I'm more of a realist. <laughs> well thank you Jared. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm up in the cloud am I? Yeah. <laughs> optimism. Optimism yeah optimism is important to have isn't it Jared? Really yeah. important. Um, uh, these two were locked. Yesterday. Oh, the clown. We uh, by the way, I must say, so about yesterday's video because the memory card cut out and uh, one of those classic cut out jobs. Hopefully, this one won't cut out. We're going to give you an update on all the pairings. So we put the Joker clown to Jupiter, and let's have a little look and see if they're still locked. Yeah. Oh, that's a very good visual, Jared. Let's look at it. Isn't that good? That might be worth getting a picture on that one, Jared, as well on your uh, iPhone. But that's a really close up visual lock. And look at the size of it, Chad. Can you see how big she is? Yeah. That's so healthy. Joker's not let us down this year at all, has he? They've been an excellent breeding pair. And uh, we've got other clown boys that are growing up at the moment, which are going to have more genes. But while we've got the big clown boy, he's proven to produce a lot of heads for us, which will then help in the future. So the idea is that if your boys aren't ready, use the clown that you've got and then bring on the other clowns. And uh, once your heads are all ready, and the other boy's ready, you can then put the higher end clown to your hats to produce even more interesting combos. So even though he's a single gene clown, he's very valuable to us, isn't he, Chad? He's very reliable. You could put him totally to 10 girls comfortably and he'll keep, he keeps on wandering, yeah, doesn't he? He's just, and he's feeding on small rats, and I'm really happy with how that's going. By the way, thank you everyone for your lovely comments yesterday on the video. It was really appreciated, the positive feedback. And we do appreciate all that feedback, so thank you for that. And I know a lot of you didn't realise that we had the um, pastel highway project uh, preparing. I know Joey said that uh, every time we do a video we unlock a new secret on the um, on the hobby that we're running here and uh, we need to perhaps um, reveal some of our projects as they happen naturally. You'll see this is a very natural channel so we're kind of videoing things as they happen and trying to interpret. Now Calypso Jared, she's not big enough yet but she was in shed. She's still in shed? She's still in shed. Yeah. Should we have a quick look at her while we're working our way down? She's putting on great size, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Got to be happy with her. So I think she'll be ready for October, November, do you think, Jan? Yeah, she'll be ready. Yeah, she carries it easy the way she has. And let's now move to the next pairing. So we've got Coco. Now, did these ones lock, Jan? They were locked last night. But no. I looked this morning and they weren't. So they were the, they were last night. Okay. Now there's a very interesting here that we think that we can learn here. Because when Jad and I first walked in, now I have noticed, and when I was first getting into breeding, I was... I remember saying to Jared, there's little bits of blood on the tissue. And I said to him, is something being injured or is it hurting somewhere? And Jared said it's part of the breeding process that the male hemipenes, they do give off blood in breeding, don't they, Jared? And not to get freaked out. I was freaked out. That's thinking, what I, I'm under the impression of. That's yeah. what I've heard. So this morning when we came in to look at the um, this pairing, we saw there was blood on um, the animals and we thought, oh, that's a bit... And initially, Jared, you thought that she may have bitten him. She might have bitten him. But since we've had a look at them and we studied them, we've realised it's part of the breeding process. And so we'll just show you what's going on here. So that, again, if you do see blood on an animal, 
It isn't necessarily a problem, it's actually part of the breeding process. And have they got any blood left on them, Jared, or did you clean them? I didn't clean them. They cleaned themselves, but there was blood on them. <laughs> Where's the blood gone? Uh, a bit more. Oh, there it is, on the very back, you see? So you just zoom in, there's little blood marks on there. So, it's interesting. I wonder whether she's rubbed on him, they bred. He's left the blood trail behind on the breeding, and she may have just put her tail over him and smothered him. Was there any blood on her at all? There was a tiny bit on her, yeah. Yeah. Can't so see it anymore. But. There's nothing to get freaked out about. I mean, there's no indication of any violence in here. There's no... Unless you can see an open wound with blood actually yeah. coming out. I yeah. I think it's all right. And you Googled it to confirm. So yeah, I Googled it, and everything that came up said that it was natural in the breeding process. Yeah. And I say, I've seen plenty of blood marks actually on the tissue, but it looks to me as though... That could also be that she's had her final um, lock, Jad, and um, she's not ovulating, has she? She's still bowl wrapping, if you look at her. She's still building. But wonderful that she locked with him, which is really good. So there's little ways to go there. So there's the three out of the six that have definitely locked. And then we've got the new ones that we've put together, Jad. Electra. Now I saw some behavior this morning in cleaning, which Jad said that they were just not breeding and they didn't seem interested. I got opened it later and saw different behavior, which I've seen before, where the girls go into the corner and they get their head up like that, which is inviting the boy on. And I've seen with that footage that we did with the clown and, and uh, Jupiter, that the girl did exactly that for nearly two or three days. She just went into the corner with her head up in, in there and, in the, and, and the clown was, was locked. So when I saw this, I thought, this is actually quite progressive, even though there's not a lock. It was showing me behavior. Now let's have a look and see if she's still doing it. Have a little look and see what's going on at the moment. They've separated. A lot of water everywhere. Is it here now? Yeah, but when I first saw her, Jared, she was doing different behaviour. So, I remember at the beginning of the season, we left them three or four days before they locked. So I think when you get a new pairing, or you got the new sign, don't be disappointed if they don't lock straight away, because I think there's a learning curve for every animal. And I think if we're patient and we let them do their thing when they want to do it, nature will naturally find its way. Um, remember that you've got the clown boy that's generating a lot of hormones and there's three locks in the room and it might just take time for the rhythm of the room to get going. It doesn't all happen all at once. Maybe they've got to sense and feel the hormones in there and get going. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll leave them in, in there for a bit longer. And the other two, what are the other two projects, Jared, that we've... There's just one more. One more. There's only right. five. I thought we had six. Yeah, six. You've already gone through the bamboo. They didn't lock. The bamboo didn't lock. So the last one was Bowser. Now he's been put to a new girl, which is Elsa. She's a hip pied. And they both look a little bit timid at the moment, don't they? I look at that and think they both really don't know what they're doing. So I wonder whether the top tip is to teach Bowser. Well, that's better, look. They're huddled together. There's body contact here, yeah, that's progressive. Instead of having them separated into two different coils, that's showing me some degree of compatibility. But a strategy that I was thinking about, Jared, is with new males, I was wondering whether, this is just an idea, so tell me your thoughts, that with new males, would we be better off putting a new male to a mature girl that knows how to breed and is ready to breed and has all the hormones that will stimulate the boy to get him activated? If it works with the project, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just wondering that if it fits into your projects, it might be a good policy to experiment a little bit and say, okay, we've got a brand new boy that's just starting to get into the breeding rotation. Let's put him to a mature, hormonal girl. That will we get did him. try that with him, though. He went to the yellow belly pied. Yeah. Past the yellow belly pied. Yeah, that's right. And she's already gone for us once. So. Yeah. We did try that approach. So I think what we're going to do is just be patient, let him learn, let him yeah. feel the hormones, let them both develop. And I think they often say the first few locks of the year don't actually guarantee any eggs. What it does, it stimulates them into the breeding mode and it starts with the stimulation process. So that's why multiple locks are good, progressing up towards the end of the season, because you're more likely to get eggs from sperm that's going in now than you would at the beginning of the period but with new breeding pairs like this you've almost got to go back and reset the time frame and allow them to progressively build now a lot of people think that the pairing of animals is over in March and April now can you hear that wind and rain Jad? so they're going to sense this stormy weather will also stimulate them but I'm thinking that I bred last year we bred these animals last year and they gave us eggs in August and we started breeding in March last year with Sienna the um, two that are locked now and she only just got up to size I think she was 1600 when we paired her 
and she got up to nearly 2,400, 2,500 and she gave us a six egg, six egg clutch, perfect eggs, no slugs and she was a brand new female and we started breeding her in March so I think that um, you don't necessarily have to start the breeding process as early as October I think that if the animals are ready and you're in March or April even I think that you should perhaps consider whether you want to start the breeding process because you may be able to generate a clutch late, later on in the season. And the other advantage is that instead of having all your eggs in one month, if you stagger your egg production over a calendar period, the management of feeding those animals and nurturing the hatchlings and if you need assist feeds, you're not doing all your assist feeds all in one hit, you're doing your assist feeds in one month for say four animals, you bring them up to feeding size so they can feed for themselves and then next month you might get a couple of animals that need assisting and you're ready to feed those so that you're not wearing yourself out so staggering and planning the stagger i think is good planning jared it's happening very naturally for us but <laughs> it's something to consider yeah we've got those eggs coming in about five days so. yeah so five more days hopefully they're gonna pit now we did have a glitch jared so we're fingers crossed and praying that they've made it yeah but the signs look positive don't they jared and you've had a little look at them and the snakes in there yeah you can definitely see snakes growing just hoping that they, them, yeah. yeah we had a drop in temperature for half a day didn't we jared which was worrying but we're hoping that because they were so small embryos that it's not going to adversely affect their development, but this is the first time for us, so it will be a learning curve for us. We'll keep you posted on how that goes. Anything else, Chad, you wanted to share today? No. No? So we've got... Uh, I'm having a, a, an x-ray today later for my hip, which is good news. I thought I'd have to wait three months, but uh, the doctors have um, fast-tracked me, so I'm off to have my x-ray done. Hopefully, there's not too bad news, and that'll start the process of me being healing. And we've got our friend coming over to sort out some things for us um, on the show and the pool that we've got because I'm looking forward to getting back and doing some swimming therapy, which is really good for my hip. So during the winter period, we've not been swimming for six months, but now that spring is in the air and the pool's being filtered and cleaned, we're going to get that heated and I'm going to jump in there and try and get my hip strong and healthy. And we've got some really exciting things coming forward in the next few months. So stay with us. Thank you for your love and support. If you uh, would like to subscribe, if you haven't, please feel free and we shall catch up with you in the next few days. Thanks for watching and goodbye.